Hi, welcome back to Open Hand Farm. Today's gonna be a little bit different. I wanna do my first garden tour and I'm using a selfie stick and I'm hoping this is gonna work. So let's just get going. The first thing we're gonna look at are my front beds. They are covered with row cover because they have plants in them that like to have the little white moth lay eggs on. So this is our way of keeping them out. Let me open this up here. So this has some broccolis in it and I planted some lettuces. So it's called Red Rageous. Some of them are coming up. Some of them are a little slow. I also planted some herbs. This is my new herb garden area all along here. Whoops, had a fence post fall. But this is also where I planted raspberries last year and they are coming up amazingly. I can't wait to have them set fruit. My granddaughter will love it too. I've got some of them coming up over here on this side of the fence, which is fine. I'm not worried about it. My sage in my pot lasted very well over the winter. And I have a lemon balm that's coming back for the first time. And it is doing beautifully. I have some lavender and my daughter who does not garden had a whole row of echinacea in her backyard. So I went and dug some up. I still need to plant some. I'm, we had a little accident here. Someone didn't realize that you really can't lean on the PVC hoop and it kind of got it a little weak. And then the wind came through and just finished it up. This bed has arugula in it, which is doing great and carrots. And I've never been able to grow carrots. So I'm really excited about that. So today we are going to use these bigger PVC pipes and put on here to put the hoop down into so it has more support. So now we're going to turn this around. See the front of the house there and my pretty tulips growing. I'm so excited about that this year. I don't know if you can see them. Let me get a little bit closer for you. I had a garden class and the master gardener that came to teach it left a million tulip bulbs. Okay, maybe not a million, but it seemed like it. So I passed them out to a bunch of different people and just planted several here and I'm really enjoying them. Now, if we walk around this way between all the pine trees i have a path to our big garden in the backyard now this one has not been planted because the weather has just not been cooperating we have done some things to prepare for planting i've had these two arbors here for three years and decided to fill in between them this year. I will be planting tomatoes on both of these. And then I wanna try some green beans in between, as well as some zucchini and yellow squash. We do have garlics planted in here, and we have some sage that's coming up from last year. So that's exciting. Good morning, girls they think i'm going to give them food but i don't have any with me right now <laughs> new this year is this little bed that is outside my food forest but we planted onions just the other day they're looking pretty good especially after a horrible downfall of a rain and tremendously windy day and I also did put some radishes in among those. Now we're gonna go into what I call my food forest, 
where food just kind of gets planted everywhere. I don't, I don't do monoculture planting where you just do row after row of the same thing. Instead, I interplant things and I do have some weeds in here, especially this area right here always gets some because it's where people walk and the wood chips kind of get pressed down and worked into the ground and then the weeds can come out. And this area is really bad this year too. So I need to lay down some more cardboard over all of this and put more wood chips on top of it to help suppress it. And of course, if any of you have mint, you know what's happening here. <laughs> it's the never ending growing of mint, but that's okay because I'm also going to plant some squash right in here among the mint plants to try to deter the squash bugs from coming in and around them. So we also have garlic here coming up to areas of it. We also have three pear trees over here, three different kinds, and they have been flowering. We also have three peach trees over here. And I know some of you are thinking those are awfully close together. Well, that was the plan. We're going to keep them cut as low as they are. They'll grow a little bit taller, but we want to be able to reach the fruit and actually pick it instead of it being wasted by being out of reach and just falling on the ground. So behind there, we have some comfrey coming up, which is always good to plant around fruit trees. And we have our blackberries that are leafing out and starting to really grow and go to town. We had a really good harvest from them last year and hope for an even bigger one this time. Over here, we have fig trees. And I'm concerned about the fig trees. The last couple years, we chopped them back really low, like down to here, and put a trash can over them and filled it with hay to keep them warm over winter. But my neighbor has a fig tree that is huge. And I said, do you cover it? And she said, no, we never have. So I decided to take the chance this year. Now, I don't know if they're just slower to do things. Oh, you know what? I am seeing some buds. So I think we're going to be okay. Oh, I am so excited. I was afraid... I had killed them. So I'm seeing some throughout the tree. And then we have another one over here. I'm seeing some buds coming up on it too. I'm so excited. You guys, I'm walking in this mint and it smells amazing. I know it can be a pain in the butt, but it's so pretty and it smells so good. I also have right here a big bee balm bush that comes back every year and it takes over this space pretty well too. This was a surprise to me. I planted snapdragons last year for the first time. I thought they were going to be a small flower, but they got really tall, like two feet tall. And they kept blooming all through the fall and even some through the winter. But here's the big surprise. They're coming back. I had no idea that they would do that. So I planted a lot more of the plants this year because I was so impressed by them last year. And now I'm going to have even more. And you'll see here, these are all calendula plants that I will have to pull several of them out because they are everywhere. But that's okay. Here we have a sage. And then this area I just love. This over here is my echinacea it's purple then we have the comfrey that grows purple flowers and then behind it we have yarrow and it is a mix of colors so it's like pinks and yellows 
and it's so pretty when all three of these are blooming and full. Here's another sage plant coming back very nicely. It was a very tiny plant when I planted it last year. I just like to keep this area kind of marked out because this is where we have asparagus. And we did cut one the other day. It was really big and fat, but we have these really tiny ones that we planted last year that are growing right now. And they're so yummy. And there should be several more coming up. They just haven't managed it yet. This is a hyssop plant. And I could not get those to grow for a few years and finally got this one plant to grow last year. And now it came back and it's huge in comparison. And I do have some new ones to plant also. So this is just a look inside my food forest. And hopefully the next time you see it, it's going to be more planted. On the trellis, I'm going to take the lights down. Hmm, maybe I could leave the lights up. I wonder what that would be like. I want to plant cherry tomatoes on this and have them hang down. That might look pretty to have the lights in and among the cherry tomatoes. Leave a comment. Should I leave the lights or should I take them down? I'm not sure. So we're gonna go out and see the other parts of my garden. This is our fire pit area and we've been wanting to have a fire but we have been on a fire ban because it's been so windy so it's just sitting there waiting I've always planted pumpkins here but this year I think I'm going to plant some cow peas black-eyed peas now over here is our new strawberry bed and they are coming in very nicely. I have to say I was very worried because I transplanted all of them and they did not look too good, but they're looking happy now. I still want to put a hoop cover over this with bird netting so that when the time comes, all I have to do is raise the lid to pick the berries and not worry about the birds getting there first. Then we have our compost bins. I need to take this first bin here and shovel it over to the second bin so that I can start a new pile here. And as I shovel it over, I will add some brown material because we've been adding a lot of food scraps and stuff and I just feel like it needs brown material. This is the screen that I use while I am sifting through all of the Zoomanu because as you can see, it's got some rocks in it. So I asked about that and apparently elephants have to eat rocks with their food in order to help digest it. Over here, we have our corn. As the corn grows and gets bigger, we can protect it with an electric fence because last year, the raccoons got all of my corn like just the day before I was gonna pick it. I also planted some cucumbers here. They do well with corn and I will probably put some sunflowers along this edge right here. Then we have our potatoes in cardboard boxes. And as you can see, they are growing. They are doing well. I was really kind of concerned because I felt like they didn't start growing as soon as I wanted them to, but they are doing really, really well. I need to come back in and put some more hay on top of them or straw, I'm sorry, not hay, and get them covered up again, but we haven't been to get any yet. So we hopefully will do that today or tomorrow. I did throw some more manure on top of this one to see what I thought, and I think I'll do that with the others and then put more straw on top of that. You can kind of see my house from this end. I am going to plant still sweet potatoes I will probably put a big box right here and plant them in a box also. I have them ready to go, but I'm gonna wait until the weather is a little bit warmer because they like warmer weather. Up here by the chicken yard is my new experiment with squash this year. 
we're going to plant pumpkins and squash on this black fabric. We're not going to mulch it so that the squash bugs won't have anywhere to hide. And then up here, we had to weigh all this down because even though it's pegged to the ground, it was blowing up because the wind was so bad. Um, but over on this side, we're gonna plant some blue Hubbard, which will draw the squash vine borer because they really like the blue Hubbard. I'm gonna use that as a trap crop so that hopefully they will lay all of their eggs over there and ignore the squash and pumpkins along here. Let's look at my artichokes. This is my one of my perennials that I planted new this year, and I haven't covered them completely yet. I, again, was waiting for the wind to stop. I need to add more cardboard on either side, and then I'm gonna put uh, wood mulch down over all of this to keep the weeds out. And I planted them in between my peony bushes because we had space in between them and they get really good sun here as the day goes on, but they're also not taking up a lot of space in the garden because artichokes can apparently get pretty big. So when the artichoke is growing throughout the spring, when the peonies are done, we can cut those back and the artichokes can take up as much room as they want. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. I'm really excited about this. I'm not sure how they're gonna do, but I wanted to try it. I have lots of peonies, you guys. When they bloom, I'll show you. They make a beautiful row. That's the neighbor's fence line, and those are their grapes. Thank you for coming along on my first garden tour for the spring of 2022 at Open Hand Farm. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, blessings on you and yours.